Hello and welcome. This presentation is, Are You Prepared? An introduction to the Oklahoma State Department of Education crisis team and school crisis management. My name is Dr. Erica Olinger, and I'm presenting today for the Four Counselors Only Conference of 2021. Thanks for joining me. By way of brief introduction, again, my name is Dr. Erica Olinger, and I'm there on the left. I'm a licensed psychologist, nationally certified school psychologist, and board certified behavior analyst here in Oklahoma. On the right, you'll see my colleague, Trisha Goga. She is also a nationally certified school psychologist and is a registered behavior technician. Together, we are crisis team school psychologists at the State Department of Education and we lead and manage the crisis team. Today, we'll learn together how the crisis team provides crisis management resources and training to Oklahoma school districts. We'll also talk about how the OSDE crisis team can provide support developing not just crisis preparedness plans, but also by supporting tailored response and recovery support to districts. You'll also receive an introduction to the National Association of School Psychologists, or NASPs, Prepare Crisis Management Curriculum. This curriculum includes response and intervention and provides best practice approaches for prevention, intervention, and postvention within a multi-tiered systems of support model. So we'll be weaving each of these objectives throughout our presentation today. So just to get us started, the OSDE crisis team, by definition, helps school districts in all phases of crisis management, prevention, protection, mitigation, response, and recovery. The team addresses both hazard-based and threat-based crises with a specific emphasis on balancing physical and psychological safety for school communities. So that's what we're all about. Now I want you to know, and I want you to write it down and save it, either on this slide or in future slides, that we do have a crisis line. Our number is 405-397-7108. And that cell phone is monitored 24 hours a day so that we can attend to any school district's crisis needs. If you or your school community is experiencing a crisis and you need support, please feel free to reach out to us at this number. Also, the QR code on your screen will take you directly to our website, which we'll discuss later, but which contains important resources and guidance as well. Now our work is funded through a Stop School Violence, sorry, excuse me, Stop School Violence Grant from the Department of Justice. And the Oklahoma State Department of Education was awarded this grant in October of 2019. The grant is a partnership between the State Department of Education and the Oklahoma School Safety and Security Institute, as well as the Oklahoma Department of Emergency Management. And at OSDE, our work is supported through the Office of Student Support. What the State Department hopes to achieve with access to this grant is the ability to respond to local education agencies or school districts during school crises. Additionally, we are called to create and lead an agency-wide crisis response and recovery team. We call it the CRRT. We're also in the process of developing a comprehensive statewide crisis framework that districts can adopt and adapt to meet their specific crisis management needs. We do also provide training again in the prepare school crisis curriculum, as well as a variety of other school crisis related topics to meet different, uh, meet different district needs. We'll talk through some of those today. And our work is going to assist in developing the comprehensive statewide school mental health plan, which takes all of the good work happening at OSDE that touches mental health and addresses it through a multi-tiered system of support framework. So now that you know a little bit about the grant, let's talk about ways that we have actually um, realized this crisis team in the year or so that we have been there. So Trisha and I, the crisis team, can help individuals, classrooms, schools, and districts, and sometimes even communities with such things as training and professional development. And again, we're gonna plug our PREPARE curriculum today. We also help develop emergency operations plans or quality EOPs. And a lot of our work to date has been in terms of direct crisis response assistance and or collaboration during school crises. 
and we've provided um, things as as simple as resource support to districts. We are happy to do um, phone or virtual collaboration with crisis teams, on-site crisis teams. We have also provided direct in-person and virtual assistance and direct response services to include mental health supports, triage, and other duties as the district has needed us. We also try to connect school and community supports specifically so that schools are able to engage in recovery efforts after the crisis. And our unofficial motto is that we are there to support districts as little or as much as needed. So the first thing I wanted to spend a moment on is the types of response and what our OSDE crisis team responses could look like. So again, often when a school experiences crisis, um, they will call us or email us for direct support. We would encourage any district that needs support to do the same, again, through our crisis line. Also, if we hear of crises through one of our um, fellow agency workers or a stakeholder or partner, we'll often reach out to districts in crisis as well to offer support. So again, our crisis line number is 405-397-7108. You can also reach us via email. So you can email me, Dr. Erica Olinger, or my colleague, Tricia Goga, or our Executive Director of Counseling and Mental Health Integration, Beth Whittle, and any of us would be able to help you and provide support as necessary. Sometimes it's just Tricia and me that are providing the response to districts, but you should also know that we have started our first phases of training our Oklahoma State Department of Education Crisis Response and Recovery Team, or CRRT. And this is a group of individuals from all across the agencies, agency with different levels and areas of expertise. So um, you can see here, this is one of our trainings from August when we all went through the prepare curriculum together. And you can see we were safely socially distanced and ma uh, masked up and learned prepare together. And in this room, we have executive directors from across the agency um, to include virtual learning directors, folks in curriculum, uh, people represented from special education, um, some of our regional accreditation officers. We've got some of our school climate specialists and um, the entire team from the school safety and security division. So many folks came together to learn and now each of these members of our CRRT is available if needed, if we need a large scale response or a localized response, they are scattered throughout the state so they can provide immediate assistance or closer to immediate assistance if the crisis is further from the OKC Metro. So this is just a one look at our team and hopefully uh, post pandemic, we'll all get a nice group picture together without the mask so you can see the work we're doing. We're also beginning our phase to train up about 20 more people um, sometime hopefully in summer of 2021. So the types of responses that we've provided just to give you a broad idea. So when Tricia and I began at the State Department in January of 20, I'm sorry, that should say January 2020 to February 2021, Please excuse that I flip-flopped the years there, but in a little over the over one year from starting joining OSDE and starting the crisis team, we have engaged in one way or another in about 59 responses. And again, some of those supports ranged from minimal support where we were just providing phone consultation or resources or um, material support, all the way to regional level collaboration where we were providing direct on-site mental health triage support and collaboration with community agencies. Um, sometimes again, it's just one person on our CRRT and we have though deployed as many as eight of our team members to help assist when in one crisis. Some of the types of responses that we've received and I'm sure you won't be surprised by some things on this list as you're in schools and dealing with these types of concerns um, often, but we have helped respond to both student and staff suicides, which it's predicted that those have increased, of course, during the course of the COVID-19 pandemic. Other COVID-19 related crises that schools have experienced, 
but also just accidental or hazard based based deaths of students and staff. So everything from um, you know natural or predicted deaths to things like car accidents, house fires, drownings, any of those types of events. We have responded to weather related events that have resulted in school crises. And then we've also helped in providing uh, recovery, mental health support post crisis. So the school may have done a excellent job in the response phases, but needed assistance during recovery. And of course, um, we've helped schools who feel like they have a lack of connection um, to community resources during and after crisis. So many different faces of crises and many different levels of response, again, to fit exactly what the schools need. And I'll mention that we don't come in and try to take over necessarily. We're not trying to criticize or direct districts. We literally try to triage and provide the level of support that they need um, and then leave without a footprint to let them do their work. In terms of crisis response, I just wanted to share some feedback that we got from Sharon Haitley, and she's the Director of Counseling and Student Advocacy in Norman Public Schools. And I'm sure many of you are familiar with her. But one thing she shared with us um, regarding our response services, the call educators never want to receive is the loss of life in a school community. The PREPARE OSDE crisis management team responded to a personal loss in our district with a well-articulated plan to compassionately respond to staff and students. Their guidance gave us confidence that we were providing an effective mental health response to help students and staff feel safe and find needed resources. In addition to our response services, another thing that um, we are called to do and that we like to do as the crisis team is to provide professional development to districts. On our website, you'll see that there's a specific place to enter in a training request if any of these options sound like something that you or your teams would like to engage in. So of course, the one that we mentioned the most is the PREPARE school crisis training curriculum. Now the PREPARE curriculum is um, published and developed by the National Association of School Psychologists. And I'm just going to give you a brief overview about what PREPARE means and some of its most um, important features for school districts to consider. But you can go to the NASP website at www.nasponline.org and they do have a whole section on PREPARE if you'd like more information. So what PREPARE does specifically for Oklahoma schools is those that participate in the entire curriculum will build a comprehensive crisis management plan, so prevention through recovery. And this is a framework that they can make specific to their school community, their school environment, and their culture. PREPARE helps us use consistent language and processes, which is important during any crisis as we're communicating with first responders and others who will be um, collaborating with us. It enhances collaboration and communication, so it gives us good ways to know how to access important collaborators and resource, resources during crisis. Again, one of the things that we find especially important with our mental health background is that the entire curriculum is attentive to balancing both physical and psychological safety throughout all five management crisis management phases. And everything within the curriculum, of course, is an evidence-based support and specifically designed procedures for schools. Other things that helps, oh, the other ways PREPARE helps Oklahoma schools is that first of all, it's cost effective. So for the duration of our grant, the crisis team does provide training free to district districts and that includes access to all of the PREPARE resources. It provides structure to build long-term sustainability and support because it is um, fashioned under a training of trainers model. So Trisha Goga and I are the only two current um, prepare third edition trainers in Oklahoma, but the intent is for district um, mental health folks or district administrators or district crisis team leaders to become trainers themselves so that districts have sustainability and they can train and um, work on the prepare curriculum together in their district without relying just on the State Department of Education in the long term. Also, it's attentive to meeting all of the legal requirements and initiatives that schools must um, engage in. 
in order to meet their call for positive safe school climates and other legal requirements around safety response and crisis response. And of course, it also helps to interweave crisis work with social emotional learning support because we know in the short term and the long term, that's what will get us back to normal and restore our academic functioning and overall student wellness and student outcomes after a crisis. The reason why it's important for districts to consider a more structured curriculum like PREPARE is that of course, because every school will experience crisis or actually crises. And so of course, um, just in the last year, everyone will remember about 2020 that schools um, helped navigate the pandemic um, of COVID-19. And um, we might have specific events like the weather events that happen in Oklahoma, ice storms, tornadoes, floods, and now even earthquakes seem to be adding to that list but also just the everyday crises that may affect individual students um, like the, uh, you know, mental health crises, staff death, injury, any of those types of things that schools experience. And so the very nature is that um, school crises will happen and schools need to be engaged in work to make sure that they can address that as best as possible. In addition to knowing that schools will experience crises and should be prepared, it's also important to know that the Every Student Succeeds Act or ESSA includes significant emphasis on comprehensive school safety. So there's also some national and state legislation that compel us to take a deeper look and a very sophisticated look at our crisis management processes. Um, and of course the PREPARE curriculum, when we say comprehensive safety, again, we really like to highlight that we believe that that includes not just the physical safety pieces, which are critical, but also balancing that with the psychological safety needs of students and staff so that their emotional and behavioral well being is also taken into account. As I've mentioned previously, the PREPARE curriculum is in line with the US Department of Education crisis management phases. So, very specific guidance for the prevention, protection, mitigation, response and recovery phases of crisis. And as indicated by the, the graphic there, um, PREPARE recognizes that these things feed into one another. So the better job we do in response and recovery, the more that's going to um, feed into our prevention plans. And our prevention plans and our protection plans, of course, help us to mitigate and respond to crises using best practice principles. So these are really integrated phases um, and prepare covers each with the appropriate amount of fluidity so that crisis teams become efficient in their work. Also, because prepare was written by school psychologists, school counselors, school administrators, and other folks that just know how school works, it really is framed within a multi-tiered systems of supports model. So just as our academic MTSS processes or our behavioral MTSS processes, PREPARE also follows the same language and logic that we know MTSS is a terrific framework for addressing student needs. So here you'll just see our famous triangle, which briefly illustrates that PREPARE curriculum covers tier one supports or universal supports for all students tier two or more targeted supports for students in crises who may need additional support. And then those tier three services or those types of supports and interventions for our most, uh, our students who need them the most or who are most at risk or who need the most intensive level of resource. And again, in addition to having different layers, it talks about those layers within the context of each of our crisis management phases. This is also important when we're talking to administrators and stakeholders and others, because we know that um, school climate and safety, which is part of your crisis plans, are associated not just with good outcomes post crises, but they're also associated with the everyday outcomes such as academic achievement, uh, positive behavior performance, increased attendance, and other important student outcomes. And so we can no longer address each of these things separately. And as part of a silo, we need to include crisis work 
to know that it is going to influence the other important aspects of school that we're all looking to deliver. Now, as you may have guessed, PREPARE is an acronym. And so the conceptual framework um, makes sense. And you'll see it's spelled out here that the P is for prevent and prepare for crises, which is important in terms of how schools are planning and developing quality EOPs. The R is for reaffirming physical health and welfare, again, as well as perceptions of security and safety. So a balance of that physical and psychological risk and how we can make sure we're reaffirming or achieving that in our school buildings and districts. E is for evaluate psychological trauma risk, which really speaks to after a crisis, how do we determine who needs services, who needs support and at what level? So we spend a lot of time talking about sorting students and staff into appropriate groups so we can match them to needed interventions. Speaking of interventions, P and R of the model are for provide crisis interventions and respond to mental health needs. That section of the curriculum really dives deep into what crisis interventions are appropriate at tiers one, two, and three, and gives direction and protocols for mental health providers and others in the schools to appropriately address students and staff's mental health needs. And the last E is for examine. And it really gives throughout the curriculum excellent tools to help us examine the effectiveness of our crisis preparedness. In other words, how do we evaluate our systems to make sure that our crisis management approaches are appropriate? And after each crisis, how can we learn, uh, learn from our response and utilize our response as an opportunity to improve our processes for the next time? So that in a nutshell is what the PREPARE curriculum covers. It does this through two uh, corresponding and complementary workshops. So workshop one is a one day workshop. It's titled Comprehensive School Safety Planning, Prevention Through Recovery. And you'll notice on my slide here that that's highlighted in green. So it really focuses on those prevention pieces, the affirmation pieces and pieces of examine to ensure that our plans in place are going to be as solid as they can before we ever even encounter crisis. That workshop, of course, is appropriate for multidisciplinary teams to include school mental health professionals, school administrators, teachers, school resource officers, school nurses, and anyone else who's going to be a part of school or district level crisis teams. And we would advocate that schools try to attend in a um, multidisciplinary format. Workshop two then, which is indicated in orange on my screen, really covers the um, post-crisis response and recovery pieces. So you can see it talks about the evaluating psychological trauma risk and then providing and responding with appropriate mental health interventions. The title of workshop two is Mental Health Crisis Interventions, Responding to an Acute Traumatic Stressor in Schools. Now, the entire multidisciplinary team can attend workshop two as well, and I would certainly encourage that. But it is specifically designed for your mental health folks, school counselors, school psychologists, school social workers, and other um, individuals who might be providing that mental health triage and that initial response directly following a crisis. You should know that you don't have to take both workshops and you don't have to take them in order and our crisis team would be happy to talk to you about the details and start scheduling them so your team can get going on accessing the PREPARE curriculum. The other thing that we do, other features of PREPARE that we do like to highlight is that um, from, actually it's first edition and we're in the third edition now, it has always had its eye towards cultural, developmental and religious considerations. So I know that um, schools are examining equity currently as a um, priority consideration as they're looking at their school processes and prepare um, already has a lens of equity as we're considering our crisis response. And so I think it is a good platform to talk about some of those equity issues and to improve our crisis plan to make sure we're considering individual needs of students and staff. The training itself is very interactive, and so there's a lot of practice sessions, a lot of real life examples, we engage in role play, so it really is an interactive experience for either the one or two day workshops. 
Also, one of the things we love is the resources. And so they, you will get a ton of resources for every phase of crisis management. And once you are prepared, trained, the authors would encourage you to use those resources or to adapt them to your own school district. Um, again, the authors are school folks, so they understand that schools are short on time, money, and resources. And so to help in that effort, it isn't expected that you take the information and go build your crisis management frameworks from scratch. They really try to help by building in all kinds of appropriate pieces that you can very easily adapt, take back to your buildings, and get to work so that you're not starting over and recreating the wheel. We also appreciate, again, Trisha and I as mental health providers, that there are significant portions of the curriculum that focus on caring for the caregiver. So it talks about issues such as compassion fatigue, secondary trauma, burnout, other pieces that some crisis management systems just don't touch on, but that's very important because we know we have to take care of the people who are providing our response in crisis and we have to be mindful of our own reaction as crisis responders. So we like the sections that focus on that. And again, one of the really great things is that everyone who participates in a NAS Prepare workshop in its entirety then goes on the National Association of School Psychologists Prepare Registry. Um, that gives you a designation. And so it means that um, you have been officially prepare trained. That's something that you can be proud of and that can go on your CV and that can be um, a point of pride for you and that you have been designated as a as being prepared trained person and you're on the registry. Also, those who are on the registry are then eligible to become trainers themselves. So again, speaking to that trainer of trainer models after you yourself have taken the workshop, if you would like, then you are eligible to become a trainer of the curriculum yourself, which would really help with district sustain sustainability. We trained a few schools to date in the prepare curriculum in either workshop one or workshop two. We were a little delayed because of the pandemic, but we are getting rolling and providing more and more prepare trainings across the state. But we did provide um, prepare training to some counselors and administrators in the Middell schools. And many of you may know Michelle Strain, who's the current instructional facilitator of counseling there in Middell. And this is what she had to say about prepare. Prepare training was a game changer for Middell schools. Attendees have learned not only what to do in a crisis, but why to do it. We are so glad that we have chosen to go through this free training from the OSDE crisis team. In addition to prepare, I did, did just want to make note because it is a commitment to um, pull everyone out of buildings for either one full day or two full days, or I guess if you do both three full days of training. And with that recognition, we also just provide um, very specific crisis, mental health, social, emotional, and school psychological professional development opportunities by request. And so this is just um, a list of some of the things that we could provide hour long, half day um, workshops on for all kinds of school professionals. So we've done um, workshops on, you know, again, different crisis management pieces, certainly several uh, that address suicide specifically or trauma informed schools. We like to present on resiliency and hope particularly for districts who have been through a crisis and are in their recovery phases. We've presented on non-suicidal self-injury, um, mandatory reporting for abuse and neglect. So I'll let you read through the list, but just know if you have a specific need that we can address, please reach out to us through our website, through the same training form or via email, and we will do our best to meet your district needs. We've also partnered with agencies um, in addition to schools that work with schools to provide this training, just so that they have the same language and understanding of our framework um, when we're talking about prepare and other crisis or mental health related issues in schools. So um, this list on this slide just talks about some of the PD we've provided to community agencies as well that would complement their work then with schools. So everything from ensuring safety and virtual space, again, more of the resiliency and hope 
professional development. We've talked about that caring for the caregivers piece and um, other aspects of crisis, crisis management, mental health and other services. Also, we can provide district crisis teams or district crisis team members with very specific technical assistance. So if you feel like you don't need a full day training, but you'd like some consultation to walk through any part of your crisis plan, if you'd like help with your drills, your vulnerability assessments, if you just want to shore up your uh, communication chain during crisis or any other piece where you don't want necessarily a traditional professional development, but you'd like some feedback and technical assistance, please feel free to contact us for any of those things as well, and we will do the best that we can. Um, and this is just a list, again, of some of the things you might think about um, and that we can help provide to your districts in terms of crisis management TA. And I want to close out our presentation today with just a review of some of the resources that we already have developed and that you can access um, and that we would encourage you to, um, to view as soon as you can or as soon as you need them. So we do have a website. Again, it's here on the um, QR code. You could also go to the Oklahoma State Department of Education website and search for crisis preparedness or crisis. And this is what should pop up. And I'm just showing here a screen share of our homepage um, so that you can see what it looks like. It clearly has our contact information, our, our phone number, if you needed to access that quickly. And there on the right, you'll see that we have resources by crisis topic. You'll find there a vetted list of print resources or video resources on a variety of crisis topics or specific crises that you might wanna investigate. We have links to our counseling pages as well as our prevention services office and our school safety and security office. We do have a COVID-19 resource center. The professional opportunities, professional learning opportunities box is where you would be able to find our training form and lists of our available offerings for your district. Um, as well as we do have some help hotlines and other agencies that you could easily access to help you in your crisis response. So I would love it if you would scan in that code or visit our page at some point, take a tour around. We try to update our website frequently with um, useful supports. And if you find something that is missing, then please let us know and we're happy to, to provide additional supports and guidance via our website. I believe I mentioned earlier, but one of the things that we are developing as part of the grant is a comprehensive school crisis management framework. So this is going to be largely based off of the PREPARE framework, which we know is best practices, but we're going to, of course, put an Oklahoma focus on what that looks like. And by the end of the grant, um, district should have access to a nice template, a nice framework, a nice body of resources and work that they could use to pattern their own um, crisis plans and crisis management frameworks. We're also in production of a suicide resource guide for Oklahoma schools, which will address prevention, intervention, and postvention. And that one I think should be very comprehensive to help aid schools in their um, prevention and response to suicide. We also have developed um, several guidance documents. They're kind of scattered throughout the OSDE website where they fit some on COVID-19, some on um, self-care, some on helping parents to teach through a crisis. And then again, very crisis specific guidance documents that you can find on our site. And across the agency, we're contributing to other work, including the Return to um, Oklahoma Framework Reopening Plan that we will be um, issuing for districts to help them get on their feet in August, hopefully after the pandemic. Um, we are also involved in the work on the MTSS trauma-informed framework, the Oklahoma Comprehensive School Counseling Framework, and the Social and Emotional Learning Competencies and Implementation Guide. So um, our work under our DOJ grant and our expertise in crisis management and mental health touches each of these things um, as well as our own um, frameworks and, and uh, professional development opportunities. 
So ways that you can help, of course, is to spread the word. If you hear of a school crisis, it doesn't even necessarily have to be in your own district. Please feel free to reach out and contact us. And we do have a process for contacting districts to help ascertain if we can help support them through. Of course, if you are in a school crisis, please, please feel free to reach out to us and we will help as much as we can. Um, this here is a screenshot of some print materials that we won't be sending out to school district soon. So this will be kind of a postcard style um, print resource. We would love it if you could post these in prominent places if you receive them on your bulletin boards. Make sure your administrators have access to these and we would just love to help um, support districts as we can and would love it if you could help us spread the word um, through your various opportunities to do so. And thank you so much for listening. I know that these pre-recorded sessions are not as fun as the live sessions, but I hope I gave you some good information about the OSDE crisis team and the types of supports and services that we would love to provide to Oklahoma schools. I'd encourage you to reach out at any time if you have questions about what we do, if you have questions about this presentation, and of course, certainly, if you need crisis help support. So on this slide, there's just the information for me, Dr. Erica Olinger, you'll see my email and the crisis line listed there. Trisha Goga, her email and office phone. And then there is the actual link to our website if you didn't get a chance to scan the QR code. So I just wanna um, acknowledge the um, authors of PREPARE, the PREPARE curriculum and others who contribute to our work, both at the National Association of School Psychologists, as well as our colleagues at the Oklahoma State Department of Education, and specifically those in the Counseling and Mental Health Integration Department, Safety and Security, Prevention Services, um, and others who contribute so much to what we are trying to accomplish together. So please contact me if you have any questions. I thank you for your time today and I wish you a great rest of the conference. Thanks so much, goodbye.